Bye guys. We are gonna watch this video later on. Thank you for everyone calling me pretty in the comments. Uh, this is what happens when you get dick. <laughs> Goodbye. All right, yes. here we are. Gosh. Okay, too many comments. All right, All right we tried. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> hey. So happy you're with us, Nikki. Thank you so much. You were like, I mean, iconic on Slag Wars, first of all. Thank um, you. And then I realized like you're so much bigger than Slag Wars. I mean, I knew that, but it was so exciting to get to know you more and explore. And I know for me, I just, when I saw you, I mean, in that fourth episode, the last episode, mm -hmm. you just I mean I was like that's a queer survivor like she is caring for her people she is sacrificing of herself so that others can get by and you look glamorous doing it so, <laughs> thank you and thank you for getting that um you know that episode um of the show didn't really um capture my story fully um you know I know in episode three we talked or two we talked about Cameron's um um, exile of his, I don't know if I'm using the right words, um, of his religious background and his family shunning him uh, due to their religious beliefs. And in episode, I actually talked about it on the show, but you know, with editing and um, time management and everything, they didn't really get to fit my story into there. Um, I'm hoping that they allow me on season two so I can express that story that a lot of people do know about. Um, what does that mean? Like snaps or money? Yeah, snaps. Because I want for money too. Yeah. Um, episode four was definitely a roller coaster. They showed about the you know, what, three, four minutes of me crying about how um suicide had taken um had reside and taken rent in um in my my brain, you know, and I went through a very terrible breakup. Um, that actually three days ago just came to closure for me, which is crazy. Um, this is a long time coming, about 10 years now. Um, I went through all of that and about three days ago, you know, my ex came out of hell and showed his ass on Instagram and started fighting with celebrities and stuff about me. And I kind of got closure from everything. So we can get into all that. Um, this is a show about survival, right? In the queer community. So um, when you're ready, I can start from the beginning or if you have like certain questions, you know, whatever you, or maybe your questions go into my story. I don't know. Totally. Um, thank you so much. I think that um, we can start with the first question because I feel like that's going to frame what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. The very first question that we would like to ask you is what is your personal definition of resilience? Uh, so my personal definition of resilience and that's what it means to be a cock destroyer. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm going to be honest with you. Every time Sophia and Rebecca said, and that's what it means to be a cock destroyer, um, we, we, that saying comes from uh, these two women who were badgered, were shunned, who were told no from the fashion industry, the music industry, the TV industry, um, their families, their school kids, friends. You know, it's just like, my definition of resilience and being part of this Kakashore dynasty is that um, saying no, owning yourself. Don't let things pay rent in your mind. Don't let them reside in your brain anymore. Uh, we're in 2021. It's time to love freely, love yourself freely, first and foremost, because a lot of us don't do that. Um, stand up to bullies. Someone has a gun in your head it's time to fight back. Do you know what I'm saying? And yep. my personal definition of that would be one love. Change the world, cure it with love. And um, that's something that I didn't do before. I would honestly always just sit here and worry about what happened to me. I, I'd use things as a crutch. You know, some, you know, some people are like, I can't get a job because I'm trans. I no longer use those crutches anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's it's like a big, it's a big fuck you to society now for me. 
And I'm hoping that with my platform and all the TV shows I've been on and like modeling and all this stuff that has come and blessed my life. Um, I don't look for fame. I'm not looking for fortune. I'm looking to get paid. Yes. But, um, <laughs> you know, for my work, but oh, all in all, Nikki Monet is a brand that is about being resilient, about fighting back, about loving yourself and educating the world and inspiring others to authentically live for themselves. So, yeah. And in question and answer, my name is Nikki Monet, contestant number one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a pageant answer, but it's just the truth. I can go on and on and on. So if I speak too much, let me know. I just stop. I love that. No, this is a space for you to share your truths, as, as I said. Um, my name is Just JP. For those tuning in, I use any pronouns, she, they, he. Uh, and uh, yeah, totally. Thank you. I needed to share my pronouns before I forgot. I'm Nikki Monet. I use that bitch as that pronoun. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. yes. <laughs> you can literally call me whatever you want, as long as you like you know, got my check. We're good. No, I'm just kidding. I know I keep speaking about money. Sorry. It's just my, like, <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> um, no, um, I honestly don't care what you call me as long as you call me. I need to be a voice. And if you got to say what you got to say in order to get my attention, then get it, you know? So there's me. How about everyone else? What is everyone's pronoun? Yeah, my name's Tris Ingles. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders, I guess, of Stories of Survival, along with Jer. Um, I use they, them, they, them pronouns. Um, I am a former student now, just graduated from Boston School of Theology. Yeah. Um, looking to do doctoral work. So my master's, or my master's degree was in gender and sexuality and religion. So there you go. <laughs> I'm looking to do that in uh, in the uh, doctoral realm as well. Right now, I'm uh, I'm moonlighting as an IT professional. So, Jer. Thanks, Tris. I am Jer, like Cher. Uh, I also use any pronouns, and um, I'm also at BU School of Theology with Tris. I'm a semester behind. We were in the same program. We met last year in a queer New Testament class and uh, we bonded over the the shared fact that we both grew up in New Mexico so that was interesting you, you don't meet a whole lot of New Mexicans in Boston and um, we've become like besties ever since so it's been really exciting to work on this stories of survival um, I'm also a graduate student so I am um, studying I'm articulating right now my thesis is uh, an uncanny theology of survival and what's uh, a religion that is for everyone else. Um, so we should talk more Nikki Monet and uh, everyone here. And yeah, that's me. Thank you, yeah, Jer. Jer like chair. I love that. Jer it's like so Jer. easy to remember. <laughs> Thanks. You actually built it. So thank you, JP. <laughs> Awesome. All right, back to you, uh, Nikki. Um, the next question I want to ask, and this is, uh, we can take this as a segue talking more about the stories that you wanted to share, uh, but you weren't able to share. Uh, we were talking a little bit about that earlier, uh, but what would be one of your earliest memories uh, in which, looking back, you had to be resilient? Um, so... It's probably where my story starts. At 14 years old, I started producing more estrogen than testosterone. Um, and, you know, I remember getting cramps and like growing breasts as a child. And I got kicked out of my house at 14 years old because of that. Um, I was thrown on a street, not thrown physically, but, you know, like get out of my house. You're going to turn your sisters gay kind of a situation and um, I'm so glad first off I want to say thank you guys for making a platform like this because there are children like how I was that are still going through this um, I know that the world is coming around and it is getting better however there are children in certain homes and religions that do have to deal with this and I don't want anyone to ever deal with this ever again that's my goal um, with my fame my platform my voice my character anything that I possess, I will try to prevent. So um, 14 years old, I did have to 
um, kind of survive on the, on the streets of Tampa, Florida. And um, I then got, you know, hopping from like shelter to shelter and um, drug dealers and people in and out of my life. I ended up selling for a drug dealer in Tampa, Florida. I remember her name and everything. Oh my God, she kind of saved my life. If you really think about it, like everything that you go through that is harmful that you see is like terrible in the news kind of built me to who I am today. And so as a 14 year old kid, I'm selling cocaine at fucking gay bars for uh, a drug dealer in Tampa, Florida. And I, I remember going to club chambers in Tampa, which is no longer there, but I saw these beautiful drag queens and in Florida, drag queens are like me, they're trans, you know? Um, we, we have one of the highest numbers of trans drag artists here in Florida. And um, I remember seeing that and I went, wow, that's what I'm going through. I didn't know what my body was going through. I didn't, I didn't understand like how a boy is turning into a girl naturally. I still don't take estrogen. I don't take anything. I've never had any surgeries done in my face to look like this. Um, it's, you know, I, I, I didn't understand. So I remember, you guys have seen Pose, the TV show? Mm -hmm. of course okay so that's real life i don't know how old you guys are but um that is real life um one of the her name was jocelyn she took me into her home her she was the house mother and um she took me in and it's just it poses spot on man it's so crazy um and i was like this little 14 15 year old kid doing drag on a tuesday night in tampa florida and that kind of picked me up to, you know, made friends within the community, slept on people's couches. The gay community really brought me in and, you know, helped me become who, you know, not a homeless kid anymore not to sell drugs anymore. I started doing drag full time. I started working as like a shot girl in the bars. Um, I started doing talent contests left and right. So there was a, a, um, like a really strong will to survive, if you will, like by, you know, cause when you're a kid, you can't really get a job, you know? So you gotta do what you had to do. And that's really what picked me up and made me resist the bullshit of the world, you know? Yeah, one thing that uh, resonates, I feel like with um, a lot of us who are queer and trans um, who grew up in this country and who faced that uh, rejection from our blood family is that there are all of these um, structures that are sometimes demonized or are like um, uh, rejected by society. But those are like the structures that give us uh, you know, the support we need for that one moment to push through. Mm -hmm. So um, can I ask about your experience um, in a house and having a house mother and how that um, changed you um, in your journey? I, I mean, honestly, if I, sorry. Hey, come here. Yes, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Snoopy, guys, I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Well, come here. Dogs are part of the beautiful creation of our earth. So let them bark. That's what I say. Let them bark. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, you guys. Um, so being part of a house, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, how was, uh, being part of a house and finding your house mother, like how did that, um, impact you at that time and how it was living well, through that? Um, hold on, let me put him up. Yeah. Hydrate. <gasps> yes. Take a drink. Sorry guys. Um, cool. So question is, no, I got it. You got um, it. Honestly, how did it impact me having a house mother growing up, um, being that homeless child and all that? Honestly, it, it's the one thing that saved me. I could, I can literally say drag saved my life. Um, there's so many times where I was meant for death. 
you know, when you're 14 years old and you're roaming the streets and you don't know what's happening and you don't have a real mother, a real father, real siblings, anyone to turn to, you end up stealing, you end up fighting, you end up having to do what you have to do to survive. And being part of a house allowed me to not have to do any of that. Um, I still was, you know, apprehensive of people, what their intentions were, how they're using me. And I can honestly say that this person did not use me at all. And they just wanted to better the betterment of their drag ch children, you know? Totally. Sorry, I just drank some Duncan, so I'm like, <laughs> um, totally. Uh, one thing that you said uh, that it saved your life, we've heard this uh, time and time again in our different conversations with different people and stories of survival, is how uh, having that support structure, you know, at a time that is so crucial, um, meant that they were able to thrive and survive. Um, yeah, so coming, um, coming into now, um, you know, ha having that support structure, like it meant that you were able to then also like focus on yourself and figure out, um, what you wanted to do. How can you tell me that time in which you said you saw drag queens and you were like, oh my God, that's what I want to do. Well, that's not ever a case that ever happened. Gotcha. Um, me wanting to be a drag queen. Um, as a child, I'm a Nickelodeon kid. I used to be on Nickelodeon shows. I would back up dance for NSYNC. I worked for PBS Kids. I was always in the entertainment world. And um, that day that I did have to go to the gay bar as I would think I was like 14 or 15 I did see them and I was like well that's what I am so um also being a creative brain and a creative artist in the world of entertainment I saw that show the drag show when I went to make that drop and I was like oh my god I can work too <laughs> you know I can get back on stage I can be creative I could do what I need to do and um yeah that's that's honestly, that was never like, like a huge part of, cause it's always been a part of me. I feel like that never left me. Mm -hmm. If you will, when you're creative, you're just creative forever. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it ever goes away. Um, so being an actor and a dancer growing up and then finding drag, it just felt normal to me. Um, so yeah, um, but yeah, being part of that house and being taken in was that moment of wow I can do this still I can keep being on stage I can keep doing everything that I need to do you know awesome. does that make sense that does make sense thank you um I'm gonna follow with uh the next question um and this is a little bit more about the stories that you wanted to tell um and how is your coming out um, influenced by your upbringing and your identities? So like tying this all together. Um, coming out what? Oh, sorry, let me repeat the question. How is your coming out story or stories influenced by your upbringing and your identity? So you were talking about all the struggles that you lived um, and you know, being kicked out at 14 and having to do um, um, all of these jobs to survive and then being able to get on stage and reclaim your power and being uh, now a platform. Um, and you talk about it so often. Um, I do talk about it often. Are you asking how it's like, how it is help like talking yes. about this years later? Oh, okay, perfect. Precisely. Yeah, um, so, so here's the thing too, also you have to understand, and I apologize for even saying this, but I was kicked out at 14, which means I couldn't finish school. So when you use big words like that, I don't understand them. Um, people ask like geography questions. So I'm like, I don't know, I'm a fucking middle school dropout. I have no clue what you're talking about. But, um, and that's another thing that I speak about. Um, you know, I, it has been the most amazing experience over the past 13 years speaking my story constantly everywhere. I mean, if you follow me, you know I talk about it constantly. If you're at my shows, I talk about it constantly. I'm always trying to inspire others. 
not necessarily even just children because there's you know I don't know if children follow me but parents mm -hmm. uh, sisters of a parent that is not you know progressive mentally you know with their children and I'm hoping that I just reach anybody that will see it that could help someone else I get constant dms and emails constantly about who you know thank you so much for making me put the knife down thank you so much for not you know allowing me to think about what is going on and not kicking my child out I get these emails constantly it's it's a this is definitely my calling it is definitely something that I was meant to do and the universe had planned for me my struggles had to be someone else's awareness and I, so the question, how is it? It's amazing. It's an amazing feeling to know that I have the power and the knowledge and the education in order to help people, you know, survive and really love each other and change mentalities of love and hate. My struggles is somebody else's awareness. I've never heard that before. And that is so, so powerful. So, so, so. Mm -hmm. I right. always say that. I love, I just like, it's the truth. Why else would you go through this? You know, kind of like Lady Gaga, if you will. Like, you know, she went through what she goes through every day about bullying. When she was a child, was bullied constantly, constantly bullied. Now her whole platform and all her music is about anti-bullying, is about loving one another. It's about changing the world one voice at a time. And it's, you know, I really look up to her. So remember when I was like, oh, I was the shot girl and all that? Me and Gaga were shot girls together in that club in Tampa. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. So we, we did that together. And uh, one day she goes, you know what? We're not going to do this anymore. And people are going to love us. And we're going to use our voices for the greater good. And we both are kind of like in entertainment now. <laughs> and she's like, oh, of course, iconic star and I'm just like on these little platforms but um it, I, it it resonated with me that you don't need to be on a certain amount of platform as long as you have a voice and you're using that platform that's all that matters and um she really taught me that and um if anyone knows this is why I get every single tattoo of one of her albums on my body because I'm just so proud of everything she's done and everything has a meaning to her about bullying and um life and surviving so um a lot of people don't know that and now you guys do that thank you for sharing that story that's incredible yeah of course uh, i want to open up to jer or tris if you have any follow-up questions about what we have talked about jer so like share yeah like share <laughs> tris go ahead no i i just want to again say thank you it's great um getting to meet you in person obviously i'm a huge fan so thank you thank um, you I wanted to talk a little bit, um, if you're willing, talk a little bit about how you met the Cock Destroyers, what that process was, um, and how you um, came to be on Slag Wars. And then if you're willing, I'd like um, to talk about um, your, uh, your survival coming through your suicide attempt and what that means, because um, that's a story that I share. Um, and I would, if you're willing, I would love to talk through some of that. Oh so, my, of course, I'm willing. This, this is my my uh, my purpose here and in this so the disgusting question, world. How did <laughs> how did you get hooked up with Sophie, Sophie and Rebecca and the Gawk Destroyers? So, um, so I don't know how familiar you are with Sophie and Rebecca, but they did this video where it started off with "Hi guys, do you know what we are?" Like. They took that and went viral. They ended up having shirts that says, do you know what we are? And it's a bunch of penises all over and it's them like this. And I had no idea who they were. And about like, I would say like three Septembers ago, my cousin got me a, um, the, the t-shirt for my birthday, cool. my cousin Christopher. And um, I opened it and I was like, what is this? <laughs> I had no idea what it was who these girls were it was so funny um but they look like whores and I connect with whores because I'm very body positive and sex positive and um give two flying fucks and eat no for breakfast so um I definitely connected with them in instantly 
um, after he showed me their videos, I was dying hysterically laughing. So naturally, um, what any person with um, a work ethic does is <laughs> whatever they wear, they tag on Instagram, they'll tag the brand. So what I did was I tagged them and Daddy Couture um, in that picture on my birthday. And that night, Rebecca and Sophie, I don't know if they were drunk or what, but at like four in the morning, my time, which is like nine in the morning, their time, um, they were like, they video called me and they were like, we love you. We're huge fans. We want to book you for a shoot. And I was like, what? It was just crazy to me. So um, that's how my relationship with them started. And um, that everything I said in episode four of Flag Wars is true. So uh, we met in September. In January, they booked me for a photo shoot with Daddy Couture, which is the brand that they own, which is what my t-shirts are out on. We got them. Yes. Yes. And um, then they... Okay, so they love how like crazy I am. So they were like, we want to do an underwear shoot with you. And I was like, okay. So they like sent girl underwears and stuff, like trying to respect me. And I was like, when I got to the shoot, I was like, no, give me the jock strap. What are you doing? I was like, I'm a chick with a dick. I'm proud of it. So I'm going to wear a jock strap in this photo shoot. And they were like, wait, you would do that? And I'm like, yeah. And they were like, what? We love you. You have to be here more. So then I ended up being like adopted into the family of Daddy Couture, um, which is an amazing brand that helps people and trans people. A lot of their t-shirt sales goes directly to organizations for um, nonprofits and youth centers and trans communities and um, black businesses that need help. You know, Daddy Couture really does help a lot with our community. Those are two straight white women that <laughs> fight for us you guys and a lot of people don't know that um as well as matthew camp but he's the biggest you know gay i know and um Artie as well he owns daddy couture as well and um they, they're just a, four amazing people who want to better our community so anyway so um about a month later in february um they called me and they were like guess what we just got and i was like when they were like a spot in fashion week like mercedes-benz fashion week in new york city and i was like Oh my God, congratulations. I was like, but wait, isn't tonight the last night? Like I follow fashion week. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, can you get on a plane? We go on in like three hours. <laughs> wow. and, I was, and I was like, what? And they were like, we're all heading over there right now. So we all flew in, uh, we walked fashion week. It was amazing. And then, um, Wow, what a night. You guys got me thinking. There's so much, I have so many memories from that night in Fashion Week. Oh my God, it was so cool. Anyways, so we got back. That was actually the first time we all met each other. We yep. all met in New York, but you know, for months we were talking. September to February, we all been just Skyping, uh, FaceTiming, and just being a family. And, um, you know, Rebecca really took me under her wing within that time frame of like, hey, there's this platform where dirty old men will give you money for being who you are. <laughs> she really mentored me on OnlyFans and um, showed me this world of like body positivity and um, just loving yourself. And yeah, and then, you know, I, I'm part of the family. Once you're part of Daddy Couture, you're with them. So any project they do, I, you know you're going to be part of from here on out until eternity. Unless of course you guys get enough time you beat someone up, which we don't do in our family. So we, um, we're very positive people and uh, yeah, they continue to use me. Slag Wars, I got the call and they were like, hey, we need you for a project. I was like, you count me in, you know the, like, I'm sure um, that's another thing. When it comes to like season two, I know I'll be part of it, which way I don't know. Whether it be writing, producing, modeling, it doesn't matter. You're like you will always be part of the family's um, project. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. So that's how I met them. I know I went on, sorry. No, no, on. that's that's really good. I mean, I love that you got on a plane and like just by a call and walked New York Fashion Week. I mean, that's just amazing yeah. to me. So. I so it's crazy. I went through a really bad breakup 
I packed my bag and my, my, I packed a U-Haul and my two dogs and I went to LA and I made a list of impossible things. Um, I want the world to know if whoever's watching this, like if you are someone like me who was down and who was out, who had nothing, make a list, put your mind to it and do it. The universe goes around like this and the law of attraction very much so is real. Um, I went through this terrible breakup. I wanted to die and kill myself. And then I made an impossible list because everyone's like, I want to move to LA and be a star. And then everyone's like, that's impossible. And I'm like, well, let's make an impossible list. You know, within my first three months, I achieved more than 80% of that list. Walking fashion week, being on billboards, uh, getting a modeling contract, being on TV shows, working for Kim Kardashian, modeling for Kim Kardashian, all these things I had on the list. I wanted and I got, and it's just the power of your brain, the power of your energy. And um, I want any of you watching to know that you can do it and you are special and you have the power. I don't let two old white men fighting for an office in our government have the power over me. I don't have a made up ghost watching over us in the sky have power over me. I am my power. I will control myself and I want everyone to know that that that's how that's it it worked for me it could work for you okay <laughs> thank you yeah mm -hmm. that is awesome thank you so much um I wanted to throw it back to Tris because I know that Tris also had a question about um one um when you attempted suicide and how that was that story and how you um are now okay so um yeah so getting back to being in a six-year relationship um after six years um dude just kind of packed up in the middle of the night without saying anything got on a plane without saying anything and uh until three days ago this was in 2000 17 yeah so it's been about three years now three four years um 2017 or 18 he packed up did that and I still haven't heard from him I don't know if he's dead or alive until three days ago so um you know when you're with someone for six years and you don't know what's going on or why um it was abusive mentally um it was a very um you need to get surgery um bottom surgery for me to um you know truly be loved by him and for ever, forever, our whole relationship, if he would like touch me down there or something, he'd be like, ugh, gross, you know, it really was traumatizing. And he held me back from loving myself a lot. And it is good that he left, but it was traumatizing that he left and I didn't know how to handle myself without any answers. So um, moving to LA, yes, I was depressed. Yes, I was suicidal, yes, Still to this day until about three days ago, I have been extremely depressed on medicine, seeing doctors, this, that, the other. And um, uh, Rebecca, I, I remember that night I was going to drown myself in a tub. Um, I hate to make light of this, but it's quite funny. I'm such a pussy. I, I couldn't even do it. I was just like, Oh, no, this is too much work. Like, but I wanted to bad. And I started screaming and hitting myself. Like, do it, you pussy. Like, I wanted to die. And Rebecca called me that night and said, can you get on a plane in three hours? And like in the middle of me in my bathtub. Rebecca kind of saved my life. Yeah. Daddy Couture saved my life. And after that experience, being surrounded by love and seeing fans sit in an audience and cry and tell us how much we inspire them, really opened my eyes to, yeah, I need to be here. I need to be on this realm and I need to be with these people to let them know what I've gone through so that way it can help someone else. And that, to answer your question, is really what happened. Yeah. I thank you so much, Nikki, for sharing mm -hmm. that. Of course. I and it's okay to laugh, you guys. I like laughing over stupid <laughs> shit. Yeah, no, I, have a very similar I couldn't even kill myself. <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that because I was I, like, "Oh, I need a shirt." <laughs> it's funny that you say that because I had a very similar experience. I was married for ten years, and when I came out as trans, my um, you're trans. Yeah, I'm trans. 
trans. All yeah. right. All right. Um, when I came out as trans, my um, my wife left me. Um, really? Like, I don't want to be with you. Um, you know, basically was like, I'm getting a divorce and you're going to pay for it all. Um, and so it was a really dark time. And I wasn't, I wasn't going to do drowning. Mine was pills because I had been depressed for a long time. I had um, had the pills in my hand, ended up calling a friend. Um, yeah. So, um, but very, I ended up having to be hospitalized for almost three weeks. Um, so um, it, it's something that is really, um, you know, as we talk about survival, that's kind of my survival story is really, is choosing, you know, in some ways I feel like, you know, I was such a pussy. I couldn't do it. I couldn't take the pills. I couldn't die. Um, but, you know, I'm so thankful that I didn't um, because right? I'm it's out. such a great I'm feeling, out. yeah. Yeah, I'm out. I'm proud. I love being who I am. I'm this non-binary poly trans whore that is um, just trying to enjoy life. So thank yeah. you. I appreciate your vulnerability. And for all of those watching, you know, there's so many, I just want to do a quick shout out. There's so many resources out there. You're not alone. Trevor Project, the Network Lared um, here in Boston. You know, there's so many resources. So please. Um, and just for the viewers, I am one of those resources. I have, I tell my followers and my fans and my friends all day long. It's, it might be hard to call a stranger. It might be hard to call a hotline and talk to a robot. Inbox me if you need to. I answer every DM that I ever receive. I have, what, 22,000 followers, and I answer every single DM that you guys send me, um, except for, like, stupid ones. Like, I like your boobs, BB. <laughs> but when you are in a crisis and when you are in need of someone to speak to, sometimes my followers connect with me through my videos yeah we've never met but I will immediately video chat with them and make sure that they are okay if someone does send me something you know where they need help so um thank you for telling them that and thank you for sharing your story that's so amazing and um and I'm glad we were too pussy to kill ourselves because we're here to tell stories and we need to so pussy power <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, I also, um, I want to thank you both for saying all this, um, for sharing your story. And also it, that comes to show how much the power that one person can have, you know, um, to save, um, to empower, to uplift, uh, mm -hmm. and how important it is to know that even in those moments of darkness, that there are people there for you. Yeah. Um, and pick up the phone, uh, pick up the app, you know, and get in contact with someone because uh, we are here. We are here for you. No. I wish I had someone to call, you know, I wish I had an influencer to look up to that opened her inbox to me when I was going through that. And that's ultimately why I do that. That's ultimately why I answer every fucking email I get, every DM, every crazy message that to a, a person that has not experienced our downfall thinks it's fucking nuts. And I, to me, it's normal for us. It's normal in our queer community to talk about things like this, to be sex positive, to um, talk about suicide, to talk to random strangers on the internet about survival. And um, yeah, it's, I, I want it to change one day. Um, not the being there for each other, but the talking about attempting. We're done. As I say, it's a chop for me in 2021. We're done. We're done trying to kill ourselves. We're done trying to prove ourselves to society. We're done trying to conform to anyone's norm. I refuse. I refuse. And anyone I care about, anyone that follows me, I refuse for you too either. So you guys fight back. Let's, let's be bad bitches this year. And Amen. really, and really just take the world by ball, its balls and just say, fuck you. I'm, I'm Jasmine with the Palace. Some know me as Nicki Monet. And guess what? Fuck off. I'm just being me and I'm wearing my shirt loud and proud everywhere I go out here. It's really cool. And um, that's ultimately why I wore this, uh, why I 
curated this shirt. You guys, some girls have dicks, get over it. You have two weeks to get it from Daddy Couture, which it goes to a great cause. It goes to Nikki, hasn't worked in 10 months. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the cause. And um, if you haven't seen it, this shirt really explains everything that I go through in everyday life. Um, some, um, some people can't get apartments because of it. Mm -hmm. Some people can't find love because of it. Some people can't get jobs because of it. Some people, you know, get divorces because of it. Some people try to commit suicide because of it. And guess what? We got to get over it. <laughs> Amen. Get the fuck over it. We're here. We're queer. We're loud. We're proud. And that's exactly what this shirt represents to me. And um, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I think we could just end there. I mean, we had some other questions, but just end there. I just want to say you can ask whatever you'd like. Oh, no, I know. We we've got more stories. I just want to again. That's uh, thank you. It's um, I'm 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 sporting the shirt as well. Jared got it for me. And Are I you wear where I me and Jared talked today about it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jared said that you got him a a really awesome grinder for. Christmas and you had to get something just as fabulous which I don't I don't know why you thought I was just as fabulous as little Kim but I'm honored that you think that because she is iconic and I fucking love her oh my god but yeah. um I was so great talking to you guys I'm so happy for what you're doing for our community and I thank you guys so much it's so awesome it really is more people need to speak you know people that talk get shit done mm-hmm Amen. We really do. So keep talking. The world needs to hear it. You guys are amazing. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Before we let you go, I do want to ask, um, is there any uh, previews that you can tell us about what is coming in 2021 for Nikki? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, this, speaking about things that matter. Um, you know, I, I learned that living in Los Angeles and now being back home in Florida, that that fake life I was living of, you know, I'm wearing Versace, like none of that fucking matters. This pandemic really opened my eyes to what really matters. And um, there's people killing themselves right now because there's no work in California. There's people killing themselves because they can't survive this pandemic. There's people getting brutally murdered, lynched, fucking black people getting pulled over for no reason and then shot. There's a lot of things that need to be talked about. 2021 is all about speaking, is all about bringing awareness to topics. Um, I'm hoping that there is um, something happening with flag wars. Um, I have nothing else on my calendar. I can't give you a great answer of, yes, I'm doing this show, I'm doing this. Everything's canceled. I live in Los Angeles where there's nothing happening. It's illegal to go outside to walk your dog. Um, I'm in Florida just doing some drag, um, filming some OnlyFans content and try, really trying to survive. This is my round two of survival. And um, I think I'm grabbing it by the balls and really kicking its ass. And um, I want anyone watching this to know that there is always a way and a will like you just have to put it out there you gotta want it and um you could soak in your misery for a couple hours but get off your fucking ass and do it after that because we're not doing that in 2021 we're gonna talk about things that matter we're gonna make money and we're gonna um be sex positive body positive and mind positive and that is what i have going on in 2021 Lovely. That sounds like uh, an amazing year i resonate yeah. with that a lot just talk talk and do right yeah exactly. talk and do Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, What's also, wrong, Kara? Any other, um, any other questions that you might want to ask? Are you a top or a bottom? <laughs> Love it. I think. Yeah. Are you okay? What's going on? Me? Oh my gosh! You are just so You're just tough and puffed. You're like. <sighs> like <laughs> So I'm a Virgo. I'm a Virgo. I, I know. Drama queen. Oh, you have like made me want to cry this whole time. I just. Really? Yes. I. Oh. You are so. Like such a beacon. Um, of hope. Absolutely. Seriously. Like. <laughs> it's. 
the things you say are like things that 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 people need to hear. <laughs> um, the th I, I've heard that the things that I say and the way I act is how people wish that they spoke or had a mentality about. And I wasn't always like this. And if me being a loud mouth, excuse my expression, anyone that's offended, I use the word freely, tranny. I'm a big loud mouth tranny and guess what? I get shit done. And I've had to learn that over the years of being pushed to the side and being shunned. And I do not want people, especially my people, our people to feel like that. So if I have to stand up to bullying, if I have to stand up to shunning, if I have to stand up to all this for you guys, and you have to sit here and cry and be inspired, then so be it, that's my job. And I refuse to resign anytime soon. So get used to the tears, bitch, because <laughs> we're, we're doing it. Yes. Wipe your shit up and get shit done. Wipe your tears, girl. You you got you got some you got some inner demons to fear of uh, to release. Just do it, you know. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for crying. And I thank you for saying that I'm inspiring you because that's that's what I want. I want to inspire. I want nothing else. I don't care for the paparazzi. I don't care for anything else. You know, most people want that with their platforms. And I'm like, nah. I want people to stop killing themselves. I want parents to start loving. So thank you. That really mean, means a lot to me that you said that just now. And I'm sorry to cut you off with me like New York Virgo talker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you rock. And you Can are you tell always... your people to follow me on Instagram? Yeah. Everyone follow me on Instagram so you can hear me rant and rave. I just started a new segment on Instagram. I think we're going to go through YouTube now for it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get funding for it because I curse so much. So I, that's why I haven't really used YouTube. But um, I started a new segment called Call It Out. And um, I'm sure you've all seen it. You saw my ex on there last week. Um, people that write stupid shit that don't think I'm going to go public. Um, I post all their screenshots online and I call them out on why you're not allowed to treat me like this. And um, I'm really bringing awareness to the trans community on um, how guys treat us and how they think we're just a whole and how we are just allowed to be like, you're, I'm not gonna love you unless you get surgery for me. Like, you know, I, like, no, we're done doing that. So I'm calling everyone out. So everyone follow me if you wanna see that crazy shit that I'm doing online. I'm that big mouth, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I love it. If you ever want to do anything like that with SOS, you, we would love to have you on and we will get funding to- Oh. Yeah. <laughs> one, thing, one thing that's very clear to me is that Jer uh, and Tris have this, um, yeah, they're really committed into taking money and putting it in the hands of people who are doing the work because there's so many there's so many people who think that they're doing so much and as you said like saying all these big words and doing all of this like elevated shit when it's like people in the streets like talk like us right, right. and that's yeah. what we need to do we need to go where people are at so Nikki, remind us of your Instagram so everybody watching can go follow you right away. It's at Nikki Monet, N-I-C-K-Y-M-O-N-E-T. Word. And then if you're into um, sexy big body bitches, um, my OnlyFans is Nikki Monet, but backwards, Monet Nikki. It's like, do you know how I came up with that? Uh-huh. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. You know, Jenna Jackson. So now it's a Monet Nikki. Mon yeah. So all my adult, all my adult things are Monet Nikki, instead of Nikki Monet. So Twitter and OnlyFans is Monet Nikki. Monet Thank you guys Nikki. so, so much sure for letting me speak. That as well, and put money in uh, the bag of somebody who's doing so many great things, so many sexy things, yeah. so many hot things, and so many important. Yeah. Things. You know, it's scary. Everyone thinks like, oh, you're on TV, you do this, you do that, you must be rich. It, when you're not working, I, I used to be very um, well off for myself working seven days a week, but not working in 10 months. You know, you have a $40,000 savings account that just dropped down to $3,000 in the past 11 months is kind of a scary thing. So yes, 
Um, listen to Just JP and buy my OnlyFans and my t-shirts, <laughs> whatever else you can do, because I am still trying to survive through all this, and it's really tough. But I'll do it, and we'll get it, and uh, I have no doubt that I got this in the bag. So. Get it done. Um, sign us off. What is your favorite Lady Gaga song? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Deya, Kito, Lizania, La Bien Rose. I love that. It's not her song. Okay, let me rephrase since that's not her song, but it is my favorite thing that she sings ever. Um, what would be my favorite Gaga song? Maybe Angel Down um, from the Joanna album or uh, Dance in the Dark. Mm -hmm. um, it's about plastic surgery and about her, like um, someone abusing a woman. Um, I really resonate with that. Um, I like Angel Down a lot because it talks about Black lives and um, really talks about Trayvon Martin being shot and everyone just stood around and took pictures and the world needs to change. So, um, oh, there's so many. She sings Lush Life. Oh, all right, let me stop. I'll keep going and going and going. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nikki. Thank you, Tris. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, everybody who's watching. You can follow us at Stories uh, of Survival um, in all uh, of our social media and our website. And to keep track uh, of all of these beautiful interviews that we're doing. Uh, we have more coming for you in 2011. So we're signing off. 2011? 2021. 2021. <laughs> oh my girl, she passed. She's, she's like, almost 10 years ago. <laughs> Let me say that again. And we have more coming for you in 2021. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Right. We'll edit here. All right, we're off the air. You're so cool, Nikki.